interest rates. Am I right? So the Fed is going to raise rates at some point by some amount. The people that make those decisions, though, don't necessarily seem to be on the same page. And that's made it a bit tricky for crypto markets this week. Total market capitalization in crypto was slightly down over the last seven days, and all but three of crypto's top 20 coins were in the red. As of Friday morning in Hong Kong, Bitcoin was 6.6% lower over the last seven days, worth about $22,300. Most of that fall, though, came in the last 24 hours. CEO and co-founder of Freeport, Colin Johnson, told Forecast, as has been the trend, we can expect to see BTC continue its crab walk between $22,000 and $24,000 until the uncertainty surrounding macro elements begins to clear. March has historically been a little bit tough for Bitcoin. Over the past decade, seven of those years have seen crypto's largest currency in the red during the month. Some have suggested buying momentum may have dried up naturally, but according to Justin Denethan from Amber Group, things in crypto have dragged on prices this week. Just recently, we've seen Silvergate, uh, the stock dropping 45%. Um, because they're delaying their earnings report and also um, Coinbase, I think, stopped working with them for the on-ramp and off-ramp of fiat US dollar. Um, so those are narratives that investors will be looking at and probably acting upon. Ethereum has also seen similar drops in price. ETH was worth about $1,566 as of Friday morning Hong Kong time. Ethereum developers successfully launched the Shanghai upgrade on the Sapolia network just this week. If done correctly on the main net, this will let validators eventually withdraw their staked ETH and take profit. There are fears, though, that a significant decrease in validators could lead to selling pressure, but Denethan remains bullish. I think, if anything, it's going to encourage people to stake more because now you don't have that time risk or that technical risk, and you're happy to just stake and unstake easily and, and earn that yield while you can. Meanwhile, both Cardano and Polygon have seen huge drops over the last week, losing 13.5% and 14% respectively. Cardano is preparing for the launch of the highly anticipated Voltaire era. But ahead of that, the token has struggled to gain above the multi-month high of 42 cents that it reached just a few weeks ago. And despite drops in Polygon's price, the network's focus on business development could be a sign of better things to come. When you have a blockchain that has partnerships with Starbucks, with Nike, with Reddit, with JP Morgan and others, it means that when things do ramp back up for crypto, when you do have another bull run or another, you know, hype over NFTs, a lot of the other companies in Web2 will be looking at which chain they should use for their NFT or their crypto adventure. And probably that will be Polygon. Despite a tough week, the year remains overwhelmingly positive for crypto prices so far, and most expect things to continue to recover through 2023. Johnson told Forecast, quote, The markets are likely to feel just like the March weather, uninviting and finicky. We appear to be squarely in the doldrums with very little on the horizon, indicating a long-term recovery of the stock market. He continued, Crypto will follow suit unless a significant change in the perception of crypto assets as hedges against inflation begins to take hold amongst large players, which remains a possibility. All right, that's it from us for this episode and this week. Do like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more content like it. And please let us know your thoughts about what's happening in the markets and with crypto prices down below in the comments or wherever you're watching this video.